Nate Palumbo here from Muscle Serpents Daily, guys, and we're going to go into the snake room and we're going to take a look at some cool, cool holdbacks and some stuff I produced in 19 and 20. We're also going to take a look at the Panda Pie Project again because I've been getting a lot of questions about Panda Pies, which is the Super Black Pastel Pie. And a lot of people have seen that I've had some uh, Black Pastel Pies up for sale on a morph market and they've been asking me a lot of questions. They want to see the parents. So, I figured, you know what, let's let's go back, let's revisit, let's take a look at the, the black pastel male, uh, excuse me, black pastel pied male I have, and then I have a black pastel head pied female, that's the parents of the panda pied uh, litters I've been producing over the last couple of years, and of the 2020 uh, clutch that I produced as well. So I'll show you the parents, I'll show you some of the babies that are left, I sold a lot of them already. I, I hit so many black pastel pies, I, I was like, the gods were, were blessing me this year, but I sold about three of them already. There's a few left still, so you guys might want to act quickly if you want to get into that project. And uh, because before you know it, they'll be gone in the blink of an eye. So let's take a look and see that project, plus some really, really cool babies that we produced in 2020. Here's my black pastel pie that I picked up in 2014. This male has been a terrific breeder for me. You know, black pastel pied, as I mentioned earlier, it's just people are just going crazy over there. It's really, I think it's one of the nicest pied combinations, just two gene. I mean, just look at that. And obviously the, the super black pastel pied, which is the panda pied, I'll show you in a little bit. That's the, the ultimate, I think, in terms of, I think, in dark pies. He doesn't want to cooperate right now, but I mean, he's, he's pretty good because he's he's got like equal, you know, he's a little higher white, but not really. He's got a lot of uh, darkness in him and he's not just a super high white. I like it a little more balanced. I I tend to be a white person, so I like it a little more skewed on, on the side of the white, but if you can get that perfect 50-50 pattern versus white, that's the best of both worlds, obviously. It's interesting because these black pastel pies have a lot of little black speckles in them too, if you, if you take a look throughout their body. Now, here's one of the uh, sons that this guy produced uh, from a, I think one of its first clutches he, he was. This is another, I kept him back as a backup. I haven't used him yet, this year will be the first year I use him. This is another black pastel pied male. So these are two males. Look at all the, I love this. It almost looks like a cowrie tick, right? Look at all those speckles. I, I like that more. I wanna see if I can get that to come out, if it's genetic or not. So I'm gonna to try to use this guy a little more this year to see if I get more of this speckling in the pied pattern. And if we can, imagine having a whole snake that just looks speckled like this, or even just in, in, in the, if you have a high white pie like this, uh, or even in a panda pied situation where you can get a black speckled, like th these are dark black spots. These are not chocolate looking. Like if you, the, the, the black pastel pie is like a, like a more of a chocolate color. The super black pastel pies are really black, and these speckles look like super black pastel pied black. Now, you know, I know a lot of people have tried to do the mahogany pies. They don't look, they're not black. Okay, they're they're dark brown, they're dark chocolate colored. And the even the super cinnamon pies are really not as black, I think. But you know, it, it's definitely blacker. But I certainly think the super black pastel pies are the darkest. Now I'm gonna go pull the mother uh, who I've been breeding this guy to, to produce my panda pie babies. All right, she's in deep shed, so I don't really wanna bother her too much. This is my black pastel head pied female. She's produced uh, two or three years in a row now for me. First year, I didn't get any panda pies. The, last, the, the second year, I got two, um, and then last year, I got uh, one in 19, or I should say this year, 20, excuse me. I have one. I wasn't sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a pair of uh, panda pie now. I'll show it to you in a little bit. And so the, these two and are all the components you need to produce panda pies. Black pastel head pie, black pastel pie. She was my backup, actually. I originally bought a, I had a female black pastel pie that just, I don't know, just for no reason died. Never produced anything for me. She was never a good eater. And every other black pastel pie to have is, is, is a terrific eater though. So who knows, you know, sometimes you, that's why you always have to have backup. Whenever you buy, like get into a project, it's a good idea to get two females and one male at least. Uh, that's a, a better, better odds. So here's the females. 
excuse me. So here's the, the parents right here of this clutch I'm about to show you. All right, here's a uh, female black pastel pied from 2020 here that we produced. She is eating these, I'll tell you one thing, these black pastel pieds eat usually really well. Um, this is a very high white one, only one little head splotch on her. Then we have this black pastel pied female. She's got the, in other words, another high white one. Oh, and she's got the, she's got the tail going on as well. Disrupting their, their sleep. And then I have this male left. That's really nice. He's got some nice blend of pattern. I mean, look, that's really, really nice looking coloration on him. He's got the tail coloring, but he's got the white tail, which I like. And then he's got the head splotch. So he's got some nice balance to his coloration. And once again, these, these, I've sold about three of these already. I had a really good luck this year with odds. This one is my, and of course the shed, I have to show you this in shed, look at those blue eyes. Um, this is my panda pied that I produced. This is a male. I might actually hold him back, I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet, but he's in deep shed. So this this was a really good clutch. I know a lot of people, once again, have been asking me about the Panda Pie Project and Black Pastel Pies. They seem to be all the rage now, so I do have a couple left. Uh, not many, they're going fast, but like I said, I sold three already. So if you're interested, let me know. All right, since that other Panda Pie looks so uh, bad in shed, this is my 2019 Panda Pied female I produced. One of the ones I held back. I sold one of them. I probably should have kept both of them, but I sold one. Got to make, you got to make back some of your investments on mine. Here's my female. She's gorgeous. Um, perfect in every way. She's got two nice little black splotches on her. She's got those little random black spots. Not as many as I would have liked, but you could just see that is jet black. Her head is jet black. This is, you know, this is, I, I think this is the, I don't even know if you can even improve on this. Once again, my goal is to be able to produce multiple Panda Pides every year so that I can offer some of them for sale. I think that, the, they, once again, they make great pets. They make, they make great, I guess you could say breeding project stuff too, is if you want, because who doesn't want to have this in their, in their collection? I just like just going in here and, and holding the snake and just handling it. If I take this out and, and, and someone who doesn't even like snakes comes into my building and I show this to them, they're like, holy mackerel, that thing is awesome. And it almost makes them want to buy a snake. And that's, you know, that's great. That gets people into the hobby. Who wouldn't want something cool like this? I remember when I was a kid and I collected hamsters and the big thing was who's gonna make a panda hamster? That was the, they were like had rewards out for it. This is going back, you know, 30 years ago. People didn't think it was possible. Nowadays, they got panda hamsters. So, anything's possible if you have the, if you can imagine it, you can think about it, obsess about it, immerse yourself in it, you'll make it happen. Well, the sunlight is so perfect today, I had to take this baby out. This Orange Dream Banana Freeway. I made one last year, it was a world's first. This year, I produced another one, he is, exquisite that freeway being the yellow belly asphalt acts like super you add in banana there's your purples you add in orange dream there's your oranges and you get a crazy crazy looking freeway combination right here this this boy is is just bursting at the seams amazing i think i'm going to offer him up for sale because i did produce one last year probably won't be cheap of course but you can make some crazy crazy stuff with this freeway project stuff if anyone's interested you can hit me up but i wanted to just give you guys a, a look at this guy because he's that gorgeous and hopefully the camera's picking it up i got him in the light outside here so i figured it's probably going to look really nice and you know sometimes it's great to look at your holdbacks you know or look at the the good stuff you produced and it just inspires you to want to make even better stuff all right here's the albino freeway that we made this year too another amazing looking creature this one is sold actually, so sorry, don't ask about it. She went pretty fast. 
as soon as I uh, did a video on her, someone contacted me and bought her. Just, I mean, one of the nicest looking albinos I've ever seen. Look at the head stamp. Look at the, the striping. Look at all this reds and oranges in here. What a gorgeous snake. I mean, it doesn't get much. I mean, you can't make an albino much nicer than that. I mean, maybe if we can get some more darkness into this, which in albino won't be darkness, it'll be more contrast. That could make it a little better. But this is this is pretty amazing right here. Look at look at the whites in here as they're offset by that stripe. Really, really nice. Look at this Hurricane Mojave Anche. Anche, I think I gave it a little uh, accent there. Yeah, the hurricane, you can see the hurricane swirls right here. And she is just blasting this contrast out. Mojave obviously improving this as well. Look at all this blushing on the lower border. I almost think this is yellow belly in here as well. Uh, this is, I don't think it's a hypo visual. This, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm calling it a, a head hypo. Could be hypo though, I'm not sure. But look at this, really pretty. This, this one will probably go up for sale, I would think. I have so much hurricane stuff I've been holding back, it's crazy. You guys, you're gonna think I'm nuts. If you saw all the hurricane stuff I have in my collection, that's just, you know, it's gonna start breeding. I'm gonna have so much of it, but I love it. I gotta say, I love the, I love the morph. I love all the contrast, I love the pattern, it, it, and I'm producing a lot of super hurricanes now that I never did before. So this was the first year for that. So if you wanna get into the hurricane project, that's another, you know, you can always hit me up and I'm willing to talk to you about it and educate you. All right, we'll finish off today with uh, what I believe to be my Moonglow Carpet Python, which would be, if it is, the first in the United States. They have them in Australia, but no one's produced it, as far as I know, in the United States. This is a caramel albino azanthic. I don't know. There is some pattern coming in here, so I don't know if it really is or not, or if it's a snow. I, I'm pretty, I have a snow, so I, I, it looks to me like it's, it's more than a snow. It's got a little bit of pattern sneaking through, I see. And once again, you don't know what these snakes are gonna look like until they go through that ontogenetic color change at about a year old. So she's not there yet. Obviously I just produced her this past season. So we'll have to keep an eye on her. She's got the white eye though, which is definitely usually typical of the moon glow. We'll see. She's, uh, she's one of my favorite snakes of all time, actually. Uh, cause I had envisioned this project for so long and I really wanted to do it. And I didn't know if it would, uh, how I would make it happen. And I just kind of got lucky. And so, uh, once again, like I said, an exquisite looking, I mean, you don't really see many totally white carpet pythons. And this is about as close as I've seen in my own presence, that is. So Wayne Larks and Deb Larks produced that full moon, what they're calling a full moon carpet, which is a, um, I guess a super hypo or super caramel albino azanthic. Uh, this is only one copy of the caramel gene. So the goal would be this year to hopefully try to produce the uh, full moon. If we can hit the odds, that's a, that's a triple recessive. That's, <laughs> that's going to be really tight, tough to do to a triple homozygous, I should say. But there she is. For those of you who have asked uh, for updates on her, um, let's see what happens. We'll see as she develops more and I'll give you guys updates. <laughs> That's gonna do it for today here at Muscle Serpents Daily. And I hope you guys enjoyed some of the really, really cool snakes that I showed you. That, that I what I hope to be a moon glow carpet python, one of my favorites, we'll see what happens with that. You don't know, because they do change when they, when they hit that one year mark. And we'll see if there's pattern or color or if, if it's really still white. Also, obviously, the banana orange dream freeway is just exquisite that guy is uh, that one of my uh, prized possessions that i've actually produced uh, the male i produced last year hopefully will breed this year that's what i'm really hoping for so you never know but these things go really quickly so if you want it i haven't even posted it yet you can contact me on that one the albino freeway which i showed you i know is, is also exquisite that that's gone that's sold it should be it'll be uh, sent out to its new owner pretty soon as soon as he gets his racks set up and uh, that's really it for today, you know, but uh, obviously good news. Um, I had mentioned on my uh, storyline about the fact that the Florida law out, outlawing iguanas, tegus, and the conditional species, which are your berms, retics, um, and scrub pythons, have, and anacondas, have been reversed. So it looks like uh, U.S. Arc Florida won a great battle 
and now we should hopefully be able to keep our, our animals, you know, because I have a, a lot of cool berms I would not want to get rid of. And th this is great news, you know, it was unconstitutional what they did. They, they made a law without consulting Florida Fish and Wildlife, which is the people who have the ability to make these laws and govern, you know, these reptiles. The state legislator stepped in and made a law and it was just not the way it's supposed to be done. And so we won a victory here. Hopefully we can keep doing that. Donate to US Ark, even if you want to just buy a t-shirt and support them. That's what it's all about. They're protecting our rights as reptile keepers. All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. I'll see you back.